Life Church. Yeah. Man, it's so good to see you guys. I'm so happy that you're here, ready to worship. That was a good set. Yes, it was. I like that. Well, good morning. My name is Joe Parks. This is my amazing, beautiful wife, <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Kathleen Parks. Nice. She always gets more applause than I do. <laughs> That's because oh, you built me up. It always happens. That's fine. I tell her whenever we're on Facebook and I, and I post a picture of her, it's the thing that gets the most likes, right? Like I can put something up of me, like some great accomplishment. Because you put up what you ate for lunch, though. <laughs> you put up pictures of your lunch. That's true. Nobody cares. On uh, Friday. <laughs> people, some people care. People care. Okay. I on can. Friday, we, uh, we went to, uh, up to Bakersfield National Cemetery, uh, Friends of ours, family here at our Northwest campus, the Myers family, uh, Tim's father passed. And uh, beautiful service that yeah. they do at the National Cemetery. It was really beautiful. And, and I had actually never been a, a, even witnessed one, much less officiated one before. A and military. So, and so I uh, yeah. went over there and I started asking a bunch of questions like, hey, fill me in. What is it? You know, just getting some advice on how to do this. And they were like, listen, it's like timed out. Like, like, you're going to get about five to ten minutes at max. And I sat there, and I, and, and Tim Myers, by the way, was also just dressed up. He looked so good in his, in his uh, naval, right, dress blues, right, in his uh, officer, all decorated. He looked awesome, and he was telling me the same thing about this. And he goes, listen, if, if, you, if you're going a little long, here's your clue. If the honor guards start to lower their rifles... <laughs> <laughs> That's a clue. <laughs> That's your clue. Although nobody's allowed to do that in the back here. Stay yeah. in the back. <laughs> that is Going not long. even happening. But we are so glad that you guys are here. Today we are in week two of our life group series, right? And making relationships work. And really today, Kathleen and I are kind of looking at this as um, uh, really kind of from a marriage standpoint. But I want you to know that all of this stuff that we are talking about applies to every relationship that we have. Be it if it's just with your children or maybe it's your parents or it's a coworker, right. uh, it applies to every relationship that we have. And so what we want to start with is in Ephesians chapter five, it really kind of gives us some insight into the differences uh, between men and women and how uh, husbands should treat their wives and how wives should treat their husbands. So here's what I want us to do. Uh, we'll read this out loud together, okay? Ephesians chapter five. And, and for the wives section, Kathleen's gonna read that and all the ladies with her, okay? And then in the husband's section, I will read it and I'll have all the dudes reading out loud all with me. Dudes. All right? So let's okay, but, start. <clears throat> but I just have to say I'm a little competitive. So ladies... <laughs> We got to look good. Are y'all ready? <laughs> ready? Like loud and proud, we're going to do this, right? Right? Because we have to win. It's always competition. Just saying. All right. Ready? Go. Out of respect for Christ, he courteously... Be cur I, was my, that was me. I'm sorry. That was me. Hold on. We're going to start over. One, two, three, go. Out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife in the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by charity. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. You guys rock. Wow. That was really good. It was very good. <laughs> that was well That's because the women rock. All right. So dudes. Right? Man voices. Okay? Are you guys ready? Man voices. On three. One, two, three. Husbands, go all out in love for your wives. We got y'all beat. Exactly as Christ did for church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring up the best of her dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. We won. <laughs> <laughs> in all of our, we're just gonna move past that, dudes. We'll work on it, it's okay. 
In all of our relationships, we're, we're going to have differences, and it doesn't matter what relationship. It it's, could be your marriage. It could be with your parents. It could be with the neighbor a few doors down. Those things are going to occur. So what we want to do is we want to talk about those and how do we overcome them. So first, let's look at the source. Like, where does all of this happen? And if you're taking notes, here's the first one. Write this down. Different sexes. Genesis 1.27 so God created man in his own image, male and female, he created them. And that's where we heard Pastor James said, and this is where all the trouble <laughs> begins, right? Right there. And so I wanted to just kind of look at some of the differences uh, between the sexes, because men, men tend to be more logical. Mm. <laughs> I don't know that I agree with that one, but... They tend okay. to be more logical. Here's another one. Men tend to get to the point quickly. That's true. Amen. Who said amen? It's a man. See, here's the thing. Women love all the details, right? Like they want to get into all the details. And I, when the I details listen, are important. No, no, no. I'm like, just give me 10% of all the things you just said. I just think 10%. Just summarize all that up. For no, because let me tell you why that's lame. <laughs> no, that, it doesn't work because Joe does things like this, like legit. He'll, he'll come in and he'll go, hey, babe, Scott just called and his wife just had the baby. And I'm like, awesome. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. Good job, right? How much did the baby weigh? Oh, I don't know. How long was the baby? I don't know. Was the delivery okay? Is everything fine? I don't know. I didn't ask. What hospital are they at so we can go say hi? Well, I didn't even think it's to ask that question. Somewhere. I'm like, what is it's happening? It's in town somewhere. It's a kid was born. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously. All right. Number two. Number two. In sources of incompatibility. Incompatibil number two is different communication styles. Mm. Men and women are different on this. Would you guys agree? Yes. Uh, amen. <laughs> Go, girl. Go, sister. That's my sister. Women um, tend to be a little bit more um, intuitive and feeling. Right? So when they're in a conversation or a, a friendly debate with, with their husbands or whatever, or their boyfriends, then they tend to go, when you say that, it makes me feel, mm. right? Because we're a little bit more into, into our feelings. Men tend to be a little bit more, um, what's my word? I, it's not logical because I didn't like how you used that earlier. I didn't like that word. Me, oh, factual. Excuse me. Factual. Mm. Factual is my word. So when, so when men are recapping a conversation, they'll, they'll, where we might say it makes me feel like this, a man might say, so let me recap. Number one, you said blah, blah, blah. Number two. And so I'm like, they're going through the facts of the conversation. Yeah. Women have lots more words right? For sure. About that time, <laughs> about the time y'all are wrapping it up, we're, we're just kind of getting going, right? Mm -hmm. So, so women tend to be a little bit more right-brained, which is the right place to be in your right brain. And men tend to be like left brain or no brain or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, but we're just different in the way that we do things. <laughs> Not that I meant that. <laughs> Here's another one. Number three, they're different personalities, yeah. different personalities, right? Like, uh, uh, I'm going to take a poll of what we look because there's, mm. there's, there's the type A personality and then there's the type B personality. Okay, so I want to look at those. I'm going to tell you all the, the, the description of both and then I'm going to take a poll and see where we all land on this. So here, type A's. Type A's tend to be uh, very ambitious, right? They can be quite aggressive sometimes. They can be controlling, highly competitive they will be. They can be preoccupied <laughs> with status. Uh, they can be workaholics. They can also at times be a little bit more hostile. Uh, they can lack patience, right? Like if you're not keeping up with them, they might lack a little bit of patience. That's type A. Now type B tends to be much more relaxed, right? They are less stressed. They are quite flexible. Um, they can be very emotional. They can be very expressive in the things that they're doing and how they talk. And they can just have this like laid back attitude. Okay. How many would you describe yourself as type A? Who are the type A's? Let me see. Kathleen's got her hand up, I know. Okay, how about type B's? That's where I'm at. Type B's? Yeah. I uh, ran across this cartoon that I thought just showed exactly the difference between the two. Look at this. That is totally it, right? Because it's here, right? A is going to accomplish We're gonna something. We're going to conquer! And, and B is like, yes. good, a break. I've been walking for a minute. I'm ready to take a break. 
I've been walking for a minute. <laughs> I snorted. So, yeah. I, was, I was so funny, she snorted. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did. Okay, so truth be told, I am I am type A. Yep. All, shush. All the way. <laughs> Joe is type B all the way. And so in the in you know, in our early years in our relationship, we really y'all we really had to figure this out. We really really did. It was and it and it took a little a little bit, but Joe is the peacemaker and I'm the one that's like, we got to figure this out. We got to hash this out. Let's make a plan. Let's do it. and he's like, whatever, you know. I mean, he was like totally laid back. But I will say that in the yeah, yeah that in those younger <laughs> years and those more immature years, I know it's shocking to imagine this, but I would dominate an argument <laughs> because he would let me. And because I wanted to, I knew what I wanted to say. I knew the point that I wanted to make. I knew the goal. I knew what I wanted to win. And Joe, and Joe would just let me. But what happened is I stole his voice. He didn't have a voice because I had it. Mm -hmm. And so I had, I had to learn to shut up so that he could speak up hear that. I had to figure that out. I was the problem. Don't raise your hands back there. I see y'all. <laughs> I had to learn to shut it down because what he had to say was valuable and important and I wasn't giving him a voice to say it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do we overcome these differences? Number one, we release others to themselves. Philippians 2, 4 through 6 says this, don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they're doing. Your attitude, everybody say attitude, attitude, should be the kind that was shown us by Jesus Christ, who though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God. Look, when, when, when we're talking about letting others be themselves, I will tell you when, when Joe and I were kind of early, uh, early on in our dating, um, he, it was, I, I don't remember how far into dating we were, but I remember there was a time where he invited all of his friends over for the purpose of coming over to meet this girl. And so I was like super nervous because part of that type A thing that I got going on is I want to do everything right and I want everybody to like me. And so I don't want to make a mistake, right? And so I don't want to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or look the wrong way or whatever. And so... So Joe's friends are there over the course of uh, over the course of the day and then or the night or whatever it was and then they leave and I'm sitting on the couch and everything's kind of normal and then I, I I'm in my head just every conversation I had every every joke that I had every laughter were they laughing with me or were they laughing at me did I make a fool of myself did I it's like going and so after a few minutes like I'm pulling up my knees and I'm kind of hugging my knees to my chest and then I'm kind of rocking because my stomach is just hurting and so now I'm kind of rocking and then I get up and I go get a glass of milk and I sit down on the couch and I pull my legs up again and I'm and I'm sipping on some milk and Joe in his 18 year old absolute brilliance wisdom looks over and he goes what are you doing and I said, my stomach is really bothering me. And he goes, why? I go, I don't know. I think I'm just a little worried. Do you think your friends liked me? Do you think they thought that that was stupid? Do you think that I, did I embarrass you? Did I, blah, 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 blah. and he goes, seriously? And I said, yeah. And this is what he said to me, 18 year old wisdom. I, I'm going to do it. Hold on. Cause I was on this side of him. 18 year old wisdom. He looks over and make sure the camera's here. Cause you have to see his face. And he goes, that's dumb. <laughs> Brilliant. That's dumb. <laughs> and, but here's the deal. He was right. And what he said to me, because type A, I'm having to think it through. What does he mean that was dumb? What is he saying? What is he trying to say to me? What, is it, what do I need to change? Lord. Is I, it happens. It's in, it's in here. Is, that's dumb. I don't care if they like you. I like you. So stop it. And in that, in that 18-year-old bit of brilliance that was very flippant, that's dumb, <laughs> came a journey that I'm still on, but to be free, to be okay with who I am and to understand who I am and to be comfortable in my, in my own skin. So thanks for telling me I was dumb. It, you know, it's what's fantastic. amazing too, as I was thinking about when she was telling that story, it's like, I don't even think we're friends with any of those folks anymore. We're not. Like you can just, I mean, we do but this But it's stuff. not because of me. Yeah. Yeah. That can't <laughs> I'm, <just> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> But we get ourselves so <laughs> caught up, right? We get ourselves so caught up in what she's talking about, that thing in the moment. Yeah. And if you'll really just honestly process it, it's probably not going to have that big of an impact down the road. It's really not. Yeah. Here's the next one. 
uh, understand your differences. And can I just tell you to understand your differences? It's going to take a ton of energy and effort on your part. Like this doesn't happen on accident. We really have to work at understanding each other's differences. So I wanted to share with you some resources, some things that have helped Kathleen and I tremendously. So if you're taking notes, write some of these down. Here's the first one. It's a book. It's called uh, Personality Plus. Personality Plus, written by Florence Litauer. Amazing. It really describes different personality types. It's all of the medical terms. It's the melancholy, the choleric, the sanguine, and the phlegmatic. It goes into depth on that and kind of helps you discover you, how that looks in your life. And it was huge for us to understand what our primary and kind of secondary was and how we operated because we understood. I Each knew other. what her weaknesses were and I knew what her strengths were. Weaknesses? So anyway, we were able to do that. Here's another one. Write this down. Love and respect. Uh, Dr. Emerson Egrets. It's really more about couples. It's, it's about how the man needs to learn to love his wife and how the wife needs to learn to respect the husband. Incredible book um, in, in the way that he describes it in that. And then, and then one more that is an absolute must is the five love languages from changer. Dr. Gary Chapman. Yeah. That was instrumental in our relationship. Uh, five love languages, which is quality, time, uh, acts of service, words of affirmation, uh, gifts, and physical touch. So those, those are them. And what we had to learn was... The way that usually we love people is how we feel loved. And the way that Dr. Gary Chapman talks about it, it's like, what, how do you get your love tank filled? How does it fill up? And it's one of those five ways really fills up your tank. But what we tend to do is we think if, that, if words of affirmation fills my tank, then it must fill your tank. But yours could be something completely different. And so we have to understand that about each other. And every couple that Kathleen and I have ever counseled, if it's been like just a marriage that's kind of hitting into a spot or if it's even premarital, we go through that book yep. because it is absolutely mandatory that you know how to love each other. There's different ways and it works in every relationship. A big thing that we found out was learning about how to love our children. That's huge. Both of our girls and understanding what that looks like. How do we love them? How does their tanks get filled up? A uh, great example in that discovery mode with our daughter Jessica and trying to figure that whole thing out was with her. Uh, there was a play production. This is one of the things that really stuck out to us, right? Was there was this play production like junior high and uh, after it was over and Jessica kind of had one of the key roles in the play, but she wasn't one of the leads. And uh, so afterwards we walk up to her and we're like, oh baby, that was amazing. You did great. We really enjoyed watching that. Words of affirmation. Yeah, and, yep. and then... And then the two leads were there and they both had flowers and so she looks at us and she goes where's my flowers <laughs> you gonna give me flowers and she was not happy about it because <laughs> because gifts were number one for yep. her not like we i'm being selfish i want my yet. flowers but yeah. i wanted you to have thought of me of giving me uh, a gift. yes and and gifts are like number five for me i like legit i don't think i have to make myself Think about it. But, but bring the gifts, though. We'll still take them. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> Everybody likes getting gifts. It's remembering to give them. I don't, ever, I don't ever think about it. So it was a deal. Here's the next one. Number three is forgive your differences. Yeah. And really, I want to make this very clear because I think that my wife is the greatest. Like, I, I, she is incredible. Anybody that spent any time with me knows, like, this is how I feel about her all the time. She is amazing. She is my best friend. And uh, I'm just riding on her, co her coattails. Yeah, don't you feel like the ball's about to drop? Don't you feel like something's about to happen? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, but it's, it's for sure. But here's the thing. I don't know if you guys know this. It may be very hard for you to believe this, but I myself have a couple of character defects. <laughs> just, you know, I have a few. And, and well, Kathleen might have one or two, maybe. Yeah. Just, just a couple of them. But that's the deal is we have to understand those and then forgive each other right. in those. And so we learn them and then it's we're working on them to make ourselves better for each other, right? Really with the help of the Holy it's Spirit. The, it's the love, acceptance, and forgiveness thing. And these differences, yeah. kind of the, these character defects that all of us have, have to be continually forgiven. We have to constantly be yeah. forgiving. We cannot let it stockpile it up. 
And it's really one of the reasons why she and I have such a great relationship is because we don't let those things stockpile. Look at Ephesians uh, 4, 31 and 32. It says, stop being mean. <laughs> Why'd you <laughs> look at me? <laughs> Why'd you look at me on that one? I don't know. Type, type A thing, I think, maybe. Stop being mean, bad-tempered, and angry. <laughs> Quarreling, harsh words, and dislike of others should have no place in your lives. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. Okay, so can I tell you like a funny story of forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like this past weekend, I was in Texas. My, my mom had her knee replaced, so I went back there to help her. And my, uh, my niece happened to be there with her, with her two-year-old son. And um, <laughs> big old baby. I was wrestling with him, and he thought I got a little bit too rough. And so he goes, ow! Like I, he was on the couch. He was bent over, and I pushed his booty so he'd fall over. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, ow! And he grabs his bottom. And I go, I'm sorry, baby. Did I hurt you? And he goes, yes! And I said, oh, I'm sorry, do you forgive me? He goes, yes. I said, okay. He goes, now kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I am not kissing it. He goes, you have, you have to kiss it. <laughs> no, I'm not kissing it. No kissing. I'm not kissing it. <laughs> Listen, how do we forgive? We have to forgive each other's differences. How do we forgive? The same way that Christ forgave us. Yeah. Right? That's what scripture tells us to do. And so what does that look like? That looks like daily, freely, completely. Yeah. That's what it looks like, right? Because here's the deal. When we think about our relationship with Father God, how often do you mess up? Every day. He's forgiving us daily. And he's forgiving us freely. There are no strings attached. There are no, if you do this, I'll do this. And it is completely. That's how you and I are to forgive those in our relationships that we have. We forgive. We have to forgive the differences. Daily, freely, completely. That's good. That's good. Uh, the next one we're going to do, number four, is learn to give love gifts. Learn to give love gifts. Okay, so what is a requirement of a love gift? That the other person didn't ask for it. <clears throat> that you don't complain when you're giving it, like, well, I went and got this for you because you've been asking for it forever, you know, right? So don't <laughs> complain about it. And that... And that really both individuals are going to feel a reward from giving that gift. So I'll give you, I'll give you uh, an example. We all know that I have to go to counseling because I'm addicted to the Bakersfield public auction. Do we all know that? <laughs> yes. It's just, it's a deal. Like Lord, it's a pain. help her. It's, it's true. I was there. I was there yesterday. I'm so sorry, but it's true. And so, um, and so one of the very first things that I bought was a sliding barn door, but, um, I, I have learned that I'm not very good at installing those kinds of things. <laughs> and so that sliding barn door has been sitting on my floor in my bathroom since, what, November? Yeah. Because the two of us together, collectively, we couldn't make it happen. <laughs> like we tried, like we tried to make it happen. We got it all up and it was perfect. And then we put the door on the slider and you like angle it up to put it on the slider and then you let it lower down and we let it lower down and it went boom on the floor. And we were like, oh. It's, it's not high enough. It's not, it's not right. <laughs> and so leaning and, against um, the wall. It was leaning. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't going to slide. And so we we were not good at that. And so while I was gone in Texas, unbeknownst to me, Joe has somebody come over who knows what yeah, in the world that they it. are doing. Yeah, <laughs> what in the world that they're doing. And I came home, and my sliding bar door yes. is over my closet. And it's so beautiful. Thank you, Clyde Dunn. Yes, and so beautiful. <laughs> so here's the deal. I didn't ask him to do that. Well, I may have some time over the past couple of months, but, but I didn't ask him to do that while I was gone. He didn't say, I got your barn door up because it's been sitting on the bathroom floor for three months. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. And in the end, we both loved it because he, he I mean, he just loved making me happy. It was, it, he, he called it our anniversary gift because our anniversary was on, on Sunday. We'd been married for 29 years on Sunday. <laughs> and so it was just a really, really sweet thing. I love it. And that okay. way, whatever you say, did you, what, do you live in a barn? And yeah. Yes. Yes, we do. Right yes, there? I do. There's a door right, right, door, there. right there. Wide open. <laughs> no, we needed to close it. That was why we got the barn door. Oh, yeah. Because our builders did a flaw when they made our, our closet. I, I know you don't care, but I'm telling you. Yeah. When they, they made our closet, they, they, they do. They care <laughs> deeply. When you go to close the door, it's too close to the shelves and the, all the hangers and stuff get in the way. So you can't even close the, shel the, the door. So it was lame. What's okay, next? sorry, I'm going. Okay. Number I feel five. like Wonder Woman. <laughs> Number five? Does, don't, don't you think I feel like no. Okay. <laughs> do y'all remember Wonder Twins? So do you, I'm doing it. Do you remember Wonder Twins? I feel like Wonder Twins. All right, number five. Number five. 
Develop common interest. Davis says, no, don't do it. Develop common interest. We have to develop some place where we, we are enjoying our time together. Joe and I like to explore. We like to go to new cities and check them out, to go to new beaches. And, and it almost sounded like I said nude beaches. <laughs> new be- <laughs> no, no, not exploring there. New beaches to go Just to. Just say new- cities, man. Just go away from that. Nude- <laughs> <laughs> new trails She's not and allowed just on stage be anymore. quiet. New restaurants, whatever, and just explore and discover new things together. Because we just really enjoy that time together where we're just walking around and we're just talking through and isn't that beautiful and all these things. And then we love doing ministry together. That's it. Did you like my nude beach? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to all of our first time guests, this is what we're talking about. Forgive your differences. Forgive your differences. I'm not going to be able to finish this. Number six. Okay. Number six. Now we're going to celebrate her. Yay! <laughs> celebrate the differences. <laughs> oh, Our differences so fun. have made us complete. They that's really true. have. And uh, Kathleen with that type A personality, right? If And me as a type B, if we would have just left things be as they were, then she would have ruled our world with an iron fist. And I just would have let her do it, right? You do you, boo-boo. I don't care. And that's, that's really what would have happened. Um, but what we recognized in that, though, is neither one of us would like that living environment. We would, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be healthy for us. And we recognized that living that way wouldn't be honoring to God. That's true. So we had to make the changes in our lives. But in that, to be able to celebrate one another. Uh, and so we had to learn. And we are still learning. And we continue to learn. Uh, and to respect the differences and how we do life together. But we are able to do that. But here's something that I really want you to catch. The key to that relationship and that healthy relationship is to be able to celebrate the differences. Because please hear me, to celebrate the differences rather than criticize. Yeah. Because that's what happens so often is our default is to go, you're not like me. You're not normal. And so we criticize that it's not normal. I love the Enneagram test and the personalities because what it will describe is that there's nine different types of personalities and you are primarily one of those nine. But the way that it describes it is it's nine normals. Like your personality is different than my personality and yours is normal and mine is normal. And we have to learn how to move and operate in that. And so then we balance each other when we do that. So look at uh, Philippians 2.2. <coughs> says, then make me truly happy, the Apostle Paul says, by loving each other and agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, working together with one heart and one mind and one purpose. Do you see that? One heart, one mind, one purpose. All of those qualities are internal. Yep. Right? Like, like we can have these differences on the outside, but inwardly we are moving together in one purpose. The same purpose. One heart, one mind, one purpose. So Kathleen, I want to challenge you. And whatever relationship it looks like, if it's uh, a marriage relationship, if it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if it's with your parents, if it's, if it's specifically with your children, we want to encourage you and challenge you to release them to be who God has called them to be. Release them in that. Learn to understand and forgive the differences. Learn to give these love gifts. Find common interest and celebrate, not criticize, celebrate the differences. And when you do that, watch how God blesses the relationships that matter the most to you. Can we pray together?